I just woke up, so it's morning voice. The microwave is my best friend. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's Janet, and if you're new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content, and make sure that you're hitting that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, then welcome back to my channel. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I am just about to make my coffee, so I thought maybe I would do a full day of eating today. And I do have to work today, but that's later this afternoon. So um, yeah, it's it's just after 10 a.m. in the morning, and I just woke up probably like 20 minutes ago, I would say. And I'm feeling very puffy today. I feel very, very puffy. Um, and I know it's because I haven't been drinking a lot of water. So my goal today, and even at work, um, I am going to drink at least two liters of water. So I'm going to practice what I preach. <laughs> I know I always share my, my tips with you guys on how to lose weight and how to stay on track. And one of those major things is drinking water. Sorry if my voice, I think I have morning voice. It's hard hard to tell, like how I sound on video isn't how I feel like I sound, <laughs> but I feel like I'm just kind of really raspy this morning, but um, I just woke up. So it's morning voice. We all we all get it, don't we, right? I'm not the only one. I don't even wake up until after my, my coffee. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm probably still half asleep right now. <laughs> um, anyways, I am going to be drinking water today. My goal is for two liters today, and hopefully I can get that in. I wanna to try to at least get my first liter in before I leave for work, um, because like I said, I just feel so puffy and I am up on the scale, um, but I don't know, like it's also that time of the month. Um, I haven't been drinking my water, so it could be a number of things. I do have a headache. I took um, uh, ibuprofen yesterday for my headache so it could be that it, it's also could be a number of things when you do go up on the scale and um, but I just feel puffy you know what I mean whether that's the the reason why I'm up on the scale or not it, it doesn't really matter but I don't worry about the scale too too much um, as long as I just stay within my weight goal range um, then I'm happy um, I'm still am up though from my lowest. So my lowest is um, 133 and I am still up. I'm up like almost 10 pounds. So <laughs> still, and it just kind of fluctuates. You know what I mean, right? Um, but you know what? That's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, after Easter is kind of done and over with and now that it's starting to get nicer weather and out walking and getting on that routine, then it'll be easy. I always feel like summer is really, really easy to keep on track and to lose weight. Um, and winter is kind of like those months where I stay inside, there's all the holidays, right? And so it's easy to get off of track. But in the summertime, I feel like it's pretty easy to stay on track. Some people find the opposite just because there's so much going on with barbecues and get togethers. But guess what, you guys, we're still doing like outdoor gatherings of 10 people. That, that's all we're doing still in Southern Alberta. Our numbers are going back up um, because of Easter, I think, and we're over a thousand a day again. <clears throat> so who knows exactly what um, the province will implement as far as restrictions again, but we're hoping that it kind of stays at bay because we're going into year two for this. So it's getting kind of old, but not to be judgmental, but it's just, I know everybody's kind of feeling that, right? And unfortunately, this has just become our new norm. We haven't had company over in our house in a year. You know what I mean? It's it's sad. But anyways, on a positive note, let's make our coffee, you guys. Oh 
You guys I had a shower and got all ready for work and now I'm going to make my meal number one why does that train always go off whenever I start recording <laughs> all right you guys I have showered and got all ready for work and I'm going to make my meal number one before I go um, and I don't know I'll have I'll try to make my meal number two before I go to or I might just take leftovers I'll see but Nevertheless, I'm going to make meal number one and I am going to make some bacon and egg cups. They're really, really simple, really easy. We're sticking with clean keto foods today, so let's get started. All right, you guys, so we are going to be making some bacon and egg cups. So I am going to preheat my oven to 400 degrees and then we will get started. Then we will get started on these bacon cups. So they're really, really simple actually, um, but I'm just going to scramble eggs. Some of the recipes that I've seen are um, just putting the egg right in there, but I'm actually going to scramble mine and then put it in. All right, so what we are going to do is we are gonna start out by taking our bacon and we are just going to put it in our cups like so sorry there we go and we are going to put it in our cups just like so all right so let's start by doing that i'm probably just going to make six i think right now There we go. So we are actually going to cook this bacon first and then we are going to put our egg mixture afterwards. So let's put this in the oven and I will have up on the screen on um, how many minutes and the temperature as well too. I'm pretty sure it's 400 but I will double check that. Okay, well that is cooking. The bacon is cooking. I am going to make the mixture that I'm going to be pouring in for the, um, the egg part of it into the bacon cups. So I'm going to use three eggs. So we're going to add my salt and pepper, the pink Himalayan salt, and then as well I'm going to add some of the veggies. Give this a quick little beat. And I'm just gonna add some of this. It's a mixture of um, green peppers, red peppers, there's some purple onion in there, and there's a little bit of mushrooms. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this.
There we go. There, and now we'll just wait to see for our bacon cups to be done and then we will fill them up and throw them back in the oven. All right, you guys, these, I left them in for about 12 minutes. So these are pretty well done. And remember they'll finish cooking once the egg is in there and um, once the egg is in there and we put them back in the oven because we'll have to cook them for another 10 minutes. So it'll finish cooking. Um, if you want, you can, uh, you can drain off the excess um, fat but I am not gonna do that. I'm just gonna leave it as is. And let's fill up these little cups. I'm gonna actually use just a little spoon just so I can pour them in a little bit easier. So let's do that. making six that you need uh, four eggs so we'll just quickly make up another one here to fill up our last bacon cup sides but that'll still be fine another thing that you guys can do is just put it on the bottom like um, cut the bacon in half and then just layer it, it along the bottom as well too I've done that as well too um, but we're just gonna leave it like this I'm sure it'll turn out just fine we're gonna top them all with some shredded cheese on top all right there we go and let's throw that in back in the oven for about 10 minutes or until uh, the egg is set and the cheese is melted. All right, you guys, these are them out of the oven. I left them in for about seven minutes and I think the cheese is all melted and the eggs are done. So I'm just gonna let that cool and then we can plate it up. All right, these have cooled for about 10 minutes or so. So let's take them out and plate them up. I'm gonna say a serving size is going to be uh, three of these, so. I'm gonna put three on my plate and go from there. All right, you guys, this is all plated up. I put a little bit of blueberries on the side as well too. Remember, you can have some fruit, mostly berries on keto. Just make sure that you limit them. So I always like putting a little bit of fruit. Um, I'm not a big, huge fruit fan, to be honest, even prior to keto, um, but I just do it kind of for the nutritional value once in a while, maybe once or twice a week. Um, but you guys, look at the cups. They turned out so good. Um, like I said, probably a muffin tin, like a circular muffin tin would be probably better i just love using my pan that i have from pampered chef because nothing ever gets stuck in it but they turned out really really good you guys so let's give them a taste test jimmy you want to taste these with me no thank you honey <laughs> they're just eggs and bacon yeah i'm gluten-free <laughs> this is gluten-free <laughs> oh, i'm gluten-positive <laughs> gluten-positive Huh? All right, you guys, let's give these a taste test. They look absolutely delicious. I also I also use the thick bacon as well, too, with this. Um, so I think they're going to be really good. So let's give them a taste test. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Really, really good, you guys. 
Super, super delicious. And these are good for on the go as well too. Pop them in the microwave and they will be fantastic to go. So that is going to be meal number one, you guys. All right, you guys, for supper, I am just going to make a quick dinner. And um, I had made the creamed spinach um, a little while ago on one of my videos. I will link that video here. Um, but I decided to make the creamed spinach and then put it on top of my chicken. And then I'm going to have that. And then as a side, I'm going to make some green beans. So let's get started. I always use the uh, frozen chopped spinach. These come in little nuggets. Um, and then I just put them in the microwave. And yeah, they come out really, really good. And the macros on them are really, really decent. So for three nuggets, they are four carbs and two fiber, making it two net carbs. So really, really good. So I'm going to probably use like, I would say, I'm gonna do like four of these just for the amount that I have here because I think this will make two servings. Um, this is just a nine by nine pan and I put some parchment paper on the bottom just for easy cleanup. And these are just some of the chicken fillets um, that I had too that I layered all on the bottom. So let's get started with our spinach, creamy spinach recipe first. Put a little bit of water in the bottom of my bowl. You guys can use any microwave safe bowl. And like I said, I'm going to put four of the spinach in there and then we just pop it in the microwave, um, literally for, how long? Yeah, for four and a half minutes. So let's do that. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get our frying pan and turn it on. And then I don't measure a lot of my stuff, but I'm going to be using some cream cheese, the Philadelphia cream cheese. Um, so this is just a recipe that I kind of came up with, to be honest. Um, so I'm gonna use just a half of a little container here of cream cheese. So if I find, um, I know in the last video that I made this, I did find like a recipe that was pretty similar to the one that I make. So I will link it down below um, or else I can write this recipe down below. But like I said, I really don't measure. I kind of just go until it tastes um, good. Um, today I'm going to add a little bit of whipping cream just because I do want it um, like full of moisture, right? So I'm just gonna add a little bit of whipping cream and then I'm just going to stir this until it gets a little bit melted. And then we will add in our spinach. This recipe doesn't take long at all. Um, so it's very, very easy. I used it as a side dish in my last video and it's just really versatile and it's a good way to add extra fat to your meal when you're having a lean protein. So it's already melting already. So I'm gonna add a little bit of seasonings as well too. I'm just gonna keep it really simple with the uh, pink Himalayan salt. and some pepper. And you know what, I think that's gonna be it actually. I'm just gonna add salt and pepper to it. I'm gonna put some of the uh, chicken seasoning on the chicken, but I'm not gonna put it in this mixture. So this is kind of what you want. You want kind of everything to be pretty much melted um, before you add your spinach. It just makes it a little easier because the spinach is already pretty much cooked. So when we add the spinach, we're just technically mixing it all together. I have my oven uh, preheated uh, to 375. So we are gonna try it at 375 um, for a little bit and then we will see how it is if it's gonna be done after that. All right, so I squeezed out all the moisture from my spinach and I'm just gonna put it in there. And we are gonna give that a good stir. If you guys are making a larger amount of chicken or I'm using like chicken breasts, like a bigger size um, amount of chicken, you guys can feel free to make more of this sauce. I just kind of made this sauce based on like how much chicken I have in the pan, which is only in a nine by nine pan. So, all right, so there we go. I'm just gonna let that kind of cook just for like literally a couple minutes. Um, just to get all of the flavors kind of together. And then we are going to pour it over our chicken, all right? Okay, so over our chicken, I like I said, I am going to put some of the Montreal steak spice and I'm just gonna put that all over our chicken just to give it a little bit more flavor. 
Don't be scared to use seasonings, you guys. It's really good to flavor things up a lot. All right, and this is our creamed spinach that I made quickly, and we are just gonna put that evenly on top of the chicken. Here we go, and we're just gonna spread it out a little bit so that everything is completely covered as well, too. So I'm not gonna leave these in the oven too, too long because this is, um, they are smaller chickens, like they're the chicken fillets or chicken tenders, whatever you wanna call them. Um, they're not like full-size chicken breasts, so they won't take too, too long. But just so you guys know, if you guys are doing like chicken breasts, it will take a little bit longer. And also make sure you're using your um, thermometer as well too. That's I always use my meat thermometer in order to um, check the temperature, make sure it's done, especially for chicken. All right, and then on the top of that, you guys, I am going to add some shredded cheese. And I'm just gonna put that all along the top. All right, and that is going to be it, you guys. So we are gonna put it in, in the oven at 375. And at first, I'm going to try it for about 15 to 20 minutes. I will keep you guys posted though once I take it out uh, for how long and if I do increase the temperature, okay? So let's put these in the oven. Okay, and while that is baking, we are gonna get ready with our side dish. I am going to use some green beans and I'm actually going to do the same thing as I'm going to put them in the microwave for a little bit to steam them up. The microwave is my best friend when I'm in a hurry and I work a lot. If you're a busy family, always go for the frozen veggies. They taste absolutely amazing. Obviously, if possible, try to get fresh and I do get fresh quite a bit. I do get fresh quite a bit, but I always like to keep frozen veggies on hand as well too. All right, so we're just going to put some in a bowl here, a microwave safe bowl. There we go. And... Whoa, look at that long one, you guys. Look at how crazy that is. Okay, I'm just going to... There we go. Perfect. There we go. And let's put that in the microwave. Do, 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 do. Put it in the microwave for about eight minutes. All right, so let's do that. While the green beans are in the microwave, I am going to get started just on my bacon. I'm going to turn this on to low heat. I just quickly washed the same pans that I did the creamed spinach in. And I'm going to use, I think I'm just gonna use one piece of bacon actually, since we don't have too, too many green beans. So I'm gonna use one piece of bacon. I'm gonna slice it up in my frying pan. I always use scissors. It's a lot easier. You guys can either cut it um, with a knife as well too. And we are just gonna fry up this bacon. I'm gonna just keep it kind of on a low temperature. And we are gonna fry this up, and then once our green beans are done, then we will add it to the bacon here as well. All right, you guys, our bacon is about halfway cooked, and the green beans are done. I'm just gonna drain the green beans. We're gonna throw our green beans in there as well. We're just going to saute this up for like about three to five minutes. I'm gonna add my seasonings as well. Of course, we're gonna do salt and pepper. Leave it at salt and pepper with this, you guys. I think that's going to be enough. We're going to get a lot of flavor from the bacon as well. So I still have this on low. Okay, we're just going to finish sauteing this up and then we will get ready. Our chicken should be done pretty soon. All right, you guys, this is the chicken right out of the oven. It absolutely looks delicious. It's done perfectly. So I left it in there for 20 minutes. I checked it with the meat thermometer and it was absolutely perfect. So it's 375 for 20 minutes when you're using the 
thinner size chicken. So if you're using a thicker chicken breast, I would definitely leave it in there for longer, but this is perfect. So let's plate some up. All right, you guys, this is it all plated up. So we have our green beans with our bacon, and then we have our chicken with our creamy spinach on top and some cheese, and it looks absolutely delicious. So let's give it a taste test. All right, let's give this a taste test, you guys. Mm. Really, really good. I feel like it may maybe needs a little bit more flavoring, which is weird because I added quite a bit of flavoring. It's really good, you guys. You guys got to give it a try. Of course, my green beans, this is how I always make my green beans. So I know they're going to be really, really good because I love my green beans this way. Really good meal, you guys. Very, very quick and easy. Something that you can whip together like really, really fast, especially when you're a working mom like I am. I like easy, simple recipes. So give this one a try. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I will also have um, the macros for this. So I will have the um, calories and I will have the carbs. So today we are doing total carbs as well too. So everything we ate today was absolutely spot on with total carbs and perfect, perfect keto day. All right, you guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me today in what I eat today. I will have my total calories and total carbs listed on the screen right now for the day. But you guys, today was a perfect keto day. So hopefully you give these recipes a try to keep you on track. And make sure that you guys remember that keto isn't as strict as people think, all right? You guys can actually make a lot of different things on keto. You can make your favorite things on keto, like I've mentioned before in my previous videos as well too. Today, just we just wanted to keep it strict keto. We wanted to stay under the 20 total carbs and we did just that, you guys. So perfect, perfect keto day. So make sure that you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content and make sure that you hit that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.